Welcome back, MGTOW males. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the mirage of the Christian woman, sometimes known as the church girl. You may still have a greater chance with that woman if she identifies as a quote-unquote conservative or Christian, but you do not have a surefire shot, and that is primarily what we go out of our way to achieve. There is a great deal of unpredictability in the environment, there is a great deal of unpredictability in the behavior of humans and in patterns. In spite of the fact that people display patterns, it is impossible to predict how they will behave 20 or 30 years from now. If you are going to get married, not only can you not count on these things, but the weeds are even more powerful, the foliage is thicker, the path is not as clear, and you cannot count on relationships in the same way that you might have been able to count on them in the past. Another thing is that your honor will be ruined as well. There is neither loyalty nor honor present. Being faithful brings no honor, and the fact that you don't know, and can never know is just oak. You have no idea how a woman's thoughts may be whirling around in her head like a dandelion in the breeze or a leaf floating through the air. Protect yourself, and I pray that this email reaches you and provides the words that I am unable to say. Okay, her morals, her religion, and the thing that is most important to you, her commitment, may be lost. A few years ago, I was introduced to this woman. When I initially met her, she displayed for me some photographs she had taken of her working on construction projects in the Dominican Republic. Before we started dating, she shared with me that her faith was the foundation of her life and that through it, she could accomplish anything. This was before we started dating one other. She inquired as to whether or not I believed in Christ, and as I had been brought up in the Catholic faith, I responded in the affirmative. Even though she and her family attended a Christian church, she gradually converted me to attend the same church. I stayed for a while, and after some time I realized that the people in the church were acting quite strangely, and they were constantly gossiping about one another. The younger adults were all having sexual relations with one another, they were all con artists in each other's eyes. I had the impression that other people looked down their noses at me because they thought they were better Christians than I was. Therefore, I advised her that we should look for our own church, and the two of us eventually did so. There were times when I just didn't feel like going to church on Sunday, and my family, and I would argue about it. There were occasions when I would just bring her back home after dropping her off. After a year and a half, whenever she tried to compel me to go, it was the worst. I proposed to her that we get married. At the time, I had the impression that she was a devout Christian young lady. I had the impression that she liked me very much, she was good with children, and she was going to school to become a nurse. As soon as I placed the ring on her finger, she immediately began to deteriorate into a worse version of herself. She became very controlling, she became very needy for intention, she was very materialistic, she had anxiety difficulties, and she would start disputes with me for no reason. She had become very needy for intention. At this point, I felt as though I couldn't end the marriage since I was already too invested in it and I was keeping my fingers crossed that things would turn out for the best. This is the predicament that many guys face in their marriages in this day and age. They make an attempt to be the repairers and this is something that frequently occurs with nice guys. I've been in relationships in the past where I've thought that the problems we were having could be fixed and I sincerely hoped that things would get better. However, the problem is that the patterns of behavior that this woman demonstrates to you for the first time have existed in her life in the past. They were things that already existed and you are unable to alter those things in any way. Before we got married, the pastor counseled us and got to know us through several meetings before we finally tied the knot. It's a nice thing that happened. After having a heated dispute with my girlfriend on her way home from work one evening, I told her that I would not be joining her there. As a result, she went up to the pastor and informed them that we needed to reschedule the appointment because I was in a bad mood. The girl embarrassed me by blaming me for something that wasn't my fault. During our time together, I footed the bill for everything, including automobiles, cell phones, credit cards, apartments, and trips, but she never once expressed gratitude for my assistance. I believe he's implying that after they got married, we got the keys to the house, and she graduated nursing school on the same day, and that as soon as we walked into the home, she got into an argument about me changing the locks. She was raised by her parents, who had money, and after the marriage, I bought us a beautiful house close to her parents' home. My name was the only one on the deed to the property. However, according to the laws of my state, in order for her to legally share ownership of the home with me, she needs just to spend one night there after becoming my wife. Oh my God, she did that to me and then stayed there for two nights. In the end, she petitioned for a divorce and started living with another man who was more than twice her age. Both of them were predetermined. The guy was the owner of a restaurant and he assured her that she could also open one on her own. To cut a long story short, we'll refer to it as anticipatory promises. You have to understand that a lot of those kinds of partnerships that hook up to cut a long tail short, he beat her up and then ran away. She sprinted after me and told me that she wanted to start a family as soon as possible. I informed her that no, I do not love her any longer. Therefore, she ended up removing half of my money out of all of my accounts without getting my permission beforehand. After we sold the house, she was given a portion of the profit that it generated. 
She is a nurse and her ex-boyfriend from high school is the father of her child. She gave her child the name that she had planned on giving to our future child as well. In conclusion, I do not hold the religion responsible. I'm blaming her. She claimed to be a Christian but did not live her life according to the teachings of the Bible, and despite the fact that she was my wife, she did not submit to me. Despite the fact that having children is one of God's mandates for a man and a woman to fulfill through their marriage, the vows she told me at her wedding do not require that they do so. She didn't keep it. She was extremely materialistic and she delighted in it whenever I bought her expensive things. She was nothing but a con artist who not only betrayed God but also betrayed me. She was a Christian in name only and only attended to church on the weekends. It was for the purpose of prestige as well as improving her appearance and making her feel better about herself. She was on the lookout for anyone who claimed to be born-again Christians. I share this experience with you in the hope that it will serve as a lesson for you and that you will not make the same mistakes that I did. So I just wanted to say a big thank you for sharing this amazing tale with us. It's the kind of thing that I'm confident will resonate with a lot of men, and I'm not sure what else I can add to it. The primary takeaway from which I want you all to extrapolate some new information. I have no doubt that you are already aware of this due to the content of the passage. According to my interpretation, we go to MGTOP because tomorrow you don't know the opinions and changes that can occur in a person who is not based in their identity. This is the reasoning behind why we go. This may be in a relationship like marriage or it could be in a relationship like friendship, all right. This does not merely concentrate on the topic of women, girlfriends, or marriages. You have to exercise discretion with regard to the people you allow into your life and the thorns of this world, the weeds, and the glittering gold can tempt us away from the things in which we believe. You are aware of her faith and you know that it is strong. However, the stresses of the world and her own anxiety, which was already present, tore her away from you. Okay, so she couldn't keep her eye on the prize and think far enough ahead to win the long game. Men will avoid you like the plague. You can expect women to avoid you. The only thing on which you can trust and place your bets is the next step that you are going to take, as well as the decisions that you already know will be made because they have already predetermined these aspects as well. She ended up spending two nights in that location. The outcome of this was predestined, and while it is unsettling that we have to live in a world like this, it does not imply that you cannot put your faith in anyone. Never judge your worth based on what another else thinks of you. You should never look to another person to define who you are. You can confide in them with certain pieces of information. You can rely on them to carry out particular tasks. If you don't trust anyone, you're putting your health at risk. However, when you have sex with a person, you sign a contract with them, you live in the same house as that person, and the relationship is between a man and a woman. Both in today's society and in marriage, you put your own identity and your own self out there for everyone to see. It is held in the hand of another individual. And when I think of this, I think of the greatest people in the history of the world. The explorers, the most successful businesses, the most innovative thinkers, and the most accomplished athletes. Even if these individuals engage in sexual activity, they expose themselves and submit themselves to the control of females. It doesn't matter if you're married, not married, or just having a one-night stand. When you have sex with a woman, you expose yourself to a level of vulnerability and weakness that you've never experienced before in your life. This is true in every single one of these scenarios. When you have sex with a woman, you are more vulnerable than you've ever been in your life. Even those who have participated in combat as gladiators or warriors have been defeated at some point in their careers. Remember this former President Bill Clinton. If we were to merge into one being, she would become Monica Lewinsky. It is said that Wilt Chamberlain had sexual encounters with 10,000 different women. Imagine the amount of ladies who were complete and utter losers. Despite the fact that he is a basketball player who has been inducted into the Hall of Fame and is considered one of the greatest of all time. However, a member of the Hall of Fame would sink to that level and become one of them. When you do this, when you engage at this level with another human being, you are accepting the fact that you can take these shots okay, and then you can, you know, go through with it. This is the message that lies underneath everything that has been said and done. You are free to put yourself in harm's way if you so choose. I am aware that I do not. You can never predict what will take place. This is just one instance out of many in which I have run this tale, but it's a good illustration nonetheless. Recently, I had a conversation with the brother while the sister was explaining how he had recently gotten married to a woman he had met when he was attending Bible college. This girl gave off the impression of being flawless, naive, and steadfast in her devotion to him, as evidenced by the fact that she was engaged to be married. When a man puts himself out there in a meaningful way, demonstrates the level of dedication he is capable of having in exchange for the loss of any sense of safety. In any other scenario, they will make you vulnerable to attack. Okay, are they to work on it? This is the predicament that we find ourselves in. This commitment is what we are looking for. I believe he mentioned that after eight years had passed. To think that it lasted for so long blows my mind. 
things started to go from bad to worse. Things began to go from bad to worse. I don't know if there were any moral warning signs of this, but it didn't take long until they split up. Things started to go downhill from there as well. Because of this, he is currently single, which is a positive development. But I believe he mentioned that she immediately met another man and that there were no children born to either of them during their time together. When I'm asked about the safety of the alternative to finding a conservative church-going girl, I want to caution you guys that there is no guarantee here. This is a couple that had planned on serving as missionaries together, even though it's likely that they had shared Bible studies and prayers together. This is not your way out of the danger zone. There is no assurance that a man will follow a woman who practices convenient religion or uses convenient branding since there is no guarantee that he will. This strategy is known as chamelining. When things get tough, when people's identities are put to the test, when expectations in life are really put to the test, and when individuals start to break apart as a result, this is when people turn to this tactic. The flawed character of human beings is to blame. It's a brokenness of our current world, and while I am not a nihilist, I am certainly a skeptic, and you can never know when that eject button could be struck. Despite the fact that I am not a nihilist, I am a skeptic. Even if the eject button is pressed by accident, if it is tapped by an elbow, if it is passing by, it will still be tapped. The bottom line is that she leaves you to be tapped by the other person, the restaurant owner of the restaurant, excuse me, the fun and exciting alternative to your steady existence that you'd otherwise supply if you were single. In this video, I could give a comprehensive exegesis of the topic, but that is not necessary right now. We need a reminder about the insecurities and the illusion that the life of a church lady entails and we shouldn't be slamming church girls, okay. We also should be batching how many church men and women are trying to live that life. I'm just pointing out that not all church girls are like this and that not all church girls are like that. It's okay, the world we live in is full of shades of gray. Although there is no such thing as black and white when it comes to selecting partners that grace unquestionably veers more toward the shadowy end of the spectrum at the present time.